Reverend Clergy, Chairman of Men's Day to all of these handsome men. This marvelous congregation, to all who have participated, we greet you in Jesus' joy. We thank you for the invitation to come and to be with you on this occasion. Now, uh, I'm not going to be long. We've been charged by this brother over there. He sang us happy. And I've been around long enough to know when to be long. <laughs> and when to be sure. Some of you are still thinking about the limelights. Dad is home. <laughs> so I know I can't get you back. <laughs> Scripture that was read, verse 8 from the first chapter of Acts of the Apostles. But you will receive power when the Holy Ghost comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria, and to the utmost part of the earth. On Men's Day, I want to talk from two words briefly, and I'll cut it. Commissioned men. Commissioned men. Some time ago, I watched a graduation of a military school. They had completed all of their training. And all of the cadets met the requirements for a graduation. They had to go through basic studies to qualify for graduation. After graduation, each one of them would now become a commissioned officer to go out use what they learn to protect us around the world. Commission is the power to perform certain duties. They were given the power to go out and pass on what they learn. They could not go out without being commissioned this is our text. The 11 <coughs> disciples of Jesus on the Mount of Olives. They were stunned, speechless, eyes dazzled as they stood looking into heaven. Jesus is gone. What a day for the disciples. They have been called from their various ways of making a living to following Jesus. 
They listened to his teaching. They did not understand everything he said, but they listened. They saw his miracles. His turning water into wine. Called a dead man back to life. Calm the demon possessed. They saw his miracles. They witnessed his crucifixion. There they were when they took Jesus away. And then they saw him after the resurrection. He was talking with them a short time ago. And now, in a few moments later, Jesus, who died, rose again, stood there talking with the eleven, was now gone. These disciples must now return to Jerusalem, looking at Olivet fading in the distance. They must now depend on the last word of Jesus. I'm sure there were times when they wished they didn't hear them. The last words of Jesus are the key words to the mystery of Christianity. These words of Jesus are a legacy. All that Jesus left was in the minds and hearts of those 11 men and a larger group of approximately 120 other people. They had no organization, no status in the community, no property except a couple of boats they left when they were fishermen. No big houses, no chariots, no education to speak of, no connection in the community. Yet Jesus left enough with this little group to change the whole world. Let's look at what Jesus left for them. In the first place, Jesus left a command. A command is an order that you must go. Not maybe, he said you must go. It was a command for them to witness. That is to tell something. They were to tell something out of their memories of being with Jesus. Tell it wherever you go, Jesus said. Yeah. Tell it so that people will hear from you what I did for you when I was with you. Those 11 and 120 had some resources we don't have today. They were eyewitnesses of Jesus and his miracles. They could tell those things what they saw Jesus had done. We have, as well as they, a responsibility to witness in this world today. We are commissioned to tell our personal experience of receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Amen. We can tell of the day we decided to follow Jesus. We can tell what it was like when Jesus came into our lives. This is what Jesus wants us to do today as commissioned men and women. To tell somebody wherever we go what the Lord has done for us. Tell somebody what it was like the day we met Jesus. Tell somebody Tell somebody we could not wait any longer that I've lived as long as I could without him. But since I met Jesus, my whole life was changed. Since I met Jesus, things are not the way they 
yelling about Jerusalem. That's what Jesus is saying to them. Tell somebody in Jerusalem, their own city, about our relationship, what did happen between us. Tell somebody in Judea. Tell in Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. Let the people know I'm not only in your memory, but I am in your present experience. When you tell about me, I go ahead of you, passing along, making the way clear for you. Tell about Jesus. When you witness for Jesus, he makes a personal promise to you. He said, you shall receive power. And after that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. These were commissioned men. They accepted the command to go and witness. The message, the service, the promise made them committed men. When you accept the command, to go and tell about Jesus and what he has done for you, you become a commissioned man or woman. Amen. Commissioned to go and tell. Amen. And not to be ashamed Amen. to tell about Jesus and what he has done for you. Because Jesus has done for you more than anyone else. of Jesus and his love. Tell of Jesus where he brought you from. My, my, my. Tell of your experience with him. Yes. Tell of who you were before you met him. Yes, sir. Tell of your lonely time. Tell of how the Lord brought joy into your life. Yes, Tell of those he met, you met when he found you. Yes. Some were in a world but the Lord changed your life. Some folk didn't want anything to do with some folk. But thanks be to God, the Lord saved your life. Some folk were down and out. And folk left them alone. Family members left them alone. But thanks be to God, Jesus did not treat them like other folk. Jesus reached down and he saved them. Some people are in church today because of the Holy Ghost coming into your life. When the Holy Ghost has come upon you, it gives you power to witness. So men, commissioned men, you are witness every day of your life. Witness in Berlin. Witness in the township. Witness in Willingboro. Witness wherever you go. Tell somebody what the Lord has done for you. Because the Lord has been mighty good to you. I wish I had more witness in the house today. Our God is a mighty good God. There are some men out there who are not saved. There's some sick folk out there. There's some folk still on drugs. There's some folk selling drugs. Some men are abusers to women and young people. Some people are abusing our boys and girls. They need to hear a testimony of how good God is. I'm a witness today that the Lord can change them. I believe God
It is an experience, experience that I go away. Uh -huh. But lo, I will be with you always. Uh -huh. To the end of the earth. Yes. There will be times yes. when you feel that you are all alone. Yes. Uh -huh. And your work is in vain. Yes. Yes. But you are to be excited. Yes. And go on and praise God anyhow. Yes, sir. Because Jesus is always with you. Amen. He will never leave you. Amen. Nor forsake you. Amen. When you witness, the word will not leave you without, the Lord will not leave you without benefits. Amen. That's another thing I love about the Lord. When you go out and witness, payday is going to come. Amen. The Lord knows how to bless your life. He will bless your witness. He will bless your life. He will bless your home. He will bless your health. He will bless your wealth. He will give you finances. He'll give you a job. He'll give you a home. He'll give you a car. He'll give you a new start in life. When you go out and witness, you will see the blessings will start coming in. You will not understand where they're coming from, but I'm here to tell when you are a witness for the Lord, yes, God will bless your life. Yes, Blessings will come in. When the praises go up, yes, the blessings will come down. Yes, he will bless you. I said he will bless you. Yes, Have I got a witness yes, in the house today? Somebody knows what the Lord is able to do. He will bless your life. Because the Lord is faithful to keep his word. Faithful to bless your life. Our God is faithful. Some folk are not faithful. But our God is faithful. There was a man who wrote a great hymn about church. Thomas Christian. He grew up in church, and he never received the blessings he thought he should have. Someone said, well, Thomas, maybe you have not given your life to Christ. When you give your life to Christ, the Lord is faithful Amen. every day. Amen. He said, well, I've tried going to church. He said, go back, give your life to Christ, and become a witness. So old Thomas Christian decided to go back, gave his life to Christ, and he realized that after giving his life to Christ, blessings began to come into his life every day. And as the tears 